In Epidemiology Part 2, we will be describing how the virus is spread throughout the world and how the U.S. has failed to control the spread of COVID-19. The outbreak began as a point source in Hunan live animal fish market, and the majority of cases were among market workers depicted in yellow. However, within 10 days, the disease rapidly spread person to person to those who had not been in the market, the blue bars, demonstrated early on that this virus was highly infectious. There is some debate with regards to when the outbreak began in China. Some suggest a larger number of asymptomatic carriers were spreading the disease before the public publicized December outbreak. As discussed earlier, it has been suggested that the outbreak began as a laboratory accident in the Wuhan Virology Lab. Given the delays in the investigation, and the secretive Chinese government, the true source of the outbreak is unlikely to ever be definitively determined. These maps document the rapid spread throughout China. Each 10-day interval documents spread outward from the city of Wuhan, where the market was located, into the entire Hubei province and progressively into the other eastern provinces. The infection quickly spread throughout the world as a consequence of Chinese citizens traveling to Europe, particularly to northern Italy, and tourists infected while visiting Italy then spread the virus to New York City. Chinese also traveled to Seattle, explaining the first outbreak in the U.S. As shown on this map from the Center of System Science and Engineering, Johns Hopkins, as of December 24, 2021, there have been nearly 279 million cases of COVID-19 and 5.4 million deaths for a death rate of 1.9%. The U.S. continues to lead the world with 51 million cases, followed by India with 35 million cases and Brazil with 22 million cases. Why is the U.S. leading the world in cases? The simple answer, failure to act. To illustrate the importance of early intervention, I commissioned the famous artist and family friend Bruno Lucchese to draw an image of Pandora's jar. Zeus, angered by the deceptions of Prometheus, warned that a great plague to you and yourself and to men shall be. He created Pandora, a beautiful maiden and fashioned a jar, often mistranslated as a box, containing all the pestilence of the world. He encouraged the curious Pandora to open the jar releasing a plague on all men. 3,000 years later, we are now experiencing such a plague in the form of COVID-19. And when politicians delay applying the tools of infection control, they are leaving Pandora's jar open, allowing the virus to spread, causing unnecessary suffering and death. These are the epidemic curves earlier in the pandemic for South Korea, China, all the European countries, including Italy and Spain, the Scandinavian countries, Australia, and the United States. The vertical axis is a log scale of the number of deaths per day from COVID-19. Each star represents the time at which the government implemented shelter in place. That is, when they closed Pandora's jar. Look at South Korea. They implemented shelter in place and aggressive diagnosis, case finding, and isolation after observing three deaths per day. Note the nearly flat curve for South Korea, pale blue. Also notice the number of cases has dramatically dropped in China, the orange curve. They intervened after three to four deaths per day and after a total of 30 deaths. Italy, black curve, on the other hand, waited until the daily death rate was 75 and they had accumulated a total of 800 deaths before ordering shelter in place. Note the steep curve as a consequence of leaving the jar open. Italy has had the highest number of deaths of any European country at that time. Finally, note the steep curve for the U.S. red. The U.S. did not implement a uniform policy. Some states sheltered in place, others choosing not to intervene. The consequence of this approach? We have by far the largest number of active cases and deaths in the world. To make matters worse, we reopened states who chose shelter in place in early May, and many have ignored recommendations to wear masks. Here are the current epidemiology curves for the United Kingdom, the United States, South Africa, and India. 
The vertical axis is the number of daily cases per million, a seven-day average, and horizontal axis is days. Note the steep rise in cases last January in the U.S. and the United Kingdom. In the U.S., too many people ignored CDC recommendations to stay home for the holiday and traveled to visit family for Christmas and New Year's. The peak during that period was 270,000 cases per day and three to 4,000 deaths per day. These cases were predominantly caused by the Alpha variant. Both the U.K. and U.S. case low numbers dropped during the spring, and it was during that time that cases in India rose to very high levels due to the Delta variant. At that time, the Indian government relaxed infection control measures and permitted large religious gatherings, leading to the explosive exponential growth of infections. Despite being a leading manufacturer of vaccines, less than 2% of their population had been vaccinated at that time. In June, there was a sudden drop in cases that is not completely understood. India is now aggressively vaccinating its population, and they are maintaining a very low level of new daily cases. This Delta variant subsequently spread to both the United Kingdom and the United States, causing summer surges. Now both the UK and US are experiencing a winter surge, and the very steep rise in cases in the UK is due to the emergence of the Omicron variant. In the case of the US, the rise is due to a combination of Delta and Omicron variants. A record number of cases is now being reported in the United Kingdom, and a similar rise is predicted for the U.S. over the next few weeks. The Omicron variant was first reported in South Africa on November 24th, and I wanted to share this country's growth curve because it is so startling. Note the extremely steep rise in new cases. There is no lag period at the beginning as seen for the Alpha and Delta variant arrows, as well as the wild type, reflecting its extremely high reproductive rate and doubling time of 1.5 to 3.0 days. Here is the United States map for December 27, 2021 from the Center of System Science and Engineering. The total case in the U.S. has risen from 32.5 million in May to 52 million, and deaths from COVID-19 are now 800,000. The U.S. represents 4% of the world's population, and we have over 18% of the world's cases and 15% of the deaths due to COVID-19. Los Angeles now has the largest number of cases, 1.6 million, followed by Phoenix, 853,000, New York City with 850,000, Chicago and Miami with 750 and 760,000, respectively, and Houston, has 617,000. The regional epicenter of the U.S. outbreak, Seattle, has controlled its epidemic, resulting in a total of only 184,000 cases. This map, generated by the New York Times December 27, shows the number of daily new cases per 100,000 population. As you can see, the Northeast has been heavily impacted by the Omicron variant. As will be discussed in Module 3 in the vaccine section, routine two-shot vaccinations affords only a low-level protection from the variant, 33% efficacy for Omicron. And now, N95 mask and a booster or third shot are being recommended to control the infection. New York City, where over 70% of individuals are vaccinated, is experiencing a surge with 231 daily cases per 100,000. Miami, which also achieved a high vaccination rate, is now experiencing 276 cases per 100,000. Washington, D.C., 186 per 100,000, and Chicago, 119 per 100,000. The highest case rate is seen in a small county in Texas, Hopkins County, with 299 per 100,000 per day. Let's look at the epidemic curve for Florida. Florida was particularly hard hit in late August, experiencing a peak of over 24,000 cases per day due to the Delta variant. Despite this huge case surge, the state government continued to ignore tried and true infection control practices. 
In fact, the governor of Florida held a special session in November that passed laws prohibiting mass mandates as well as vaccine mandates. All public spaces allow full occupancy, including restaurants and bars. Note the sharp rise in daily cases in Florida as of December 24th. The steep curve is similar to that seen in South Africa. Simulation of the course of the epidemic in Florida has been produced by a team from the University of Florida's Emerging Pathogen Institute. They predict a surge of over 30,000 daily cases. The peak originally was forecast for mid-February. However, a steep rise is presently occurring and now the predicted peak and most likely will be in mid-January. How will the Omicron affect our health systems? Although the disease caused by this variant is estimated to be 30 to 60% less severe, taking this into account in the simulations still predicts a minimum of 100 deaths per day at the peak in Florida because of the large number of cases that will be infected. Assuming a 20% mortality in COVID-19 cases admitted to the MICU, this predicts a daily rate of 500 new MICU cases due to the virus. The average length of stay for the critically ill COVID-19 case in our hospital is 10 days, and therefore COVID-19 cases will occupy 5,000 of 6,195 or 80% of MICU beds in Florida at the peak of the infection. If EPI's conservative estimate of daily deaths proves to be low, Florida's health care system could exceed capacity by several fold. To summarize the content of this video, the epidemic began as a point source outbreak in a live animal fish market in Hunan, China, or possibly following a laboratory accident at the Wuhan Virology Laboratory. As of December 24, 2021, worldwide, there are over 278 million cases and over 5.3 million deaths. Many countries early on experienced exponential epidemic curves because of the delays in implementation of infection control practices. Pandora's jar was left open. However, many countries were beginning to control the epidemic in the late summer, with the exception of the United States, where politicians insisted on blocking scientifically-based infection control measures. These policies explain why the U.S. leads the world in the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths. With the spread of the Omicron variant, which can infect a high percentage of the vaccinated individuals, many countries are now experiencing a new surge of infections. Disease activity is high throughout the United States, reaching levels of over 200 per 100,000 new cases per day. The state of Florida serves as an example of what not to do. The state legislators have passed laws that prohibit mask and vaccine mandates. As a consequence, the Omicron variant is spreading rapidly and promises to overwhelm Florida's as well as many other states' health delivery systems. A third vaccine shot, combined with social distancing, avoiding closed public spaces, and wearing N95 masks, will be critical for controlling this fourth surge.